Hey, what's up? Welcome to the intro. I'm your host, Jess Huddleston, and today my guest is rising folk rock singer Georgia Harmer, whose debut album, Stay in Touch, is definitely going to become a staple in your record collection. Here she is now, performing Head Rush. Georgia, I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. And thanks us. for coming in. Your voice just lulls me. It's so beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell me, everyone who's here, introduce me to the crew. We have Dylan Birchall on guitar. Hello. We've got Julian Zahoyos on drums. We've got Ben Whiteley on the bass. And he is my second cousin once removed. No way. Yeah. Fun fact. We just pinpointed exactly how we're related, but we've known for since we met. I love this. Keeping it in the family, a yeah. family affair. So fun. Well, I want to talk about Head Rush because that is hands down one of my favorite songs from last year. Thank you so much. It's just so lovely. And you do such a wonderful job of capturing that essence of freedom that you have when you're younger in summertime. And mm -hmm. I personally feel like as I've gotten older, you lose that a little bit, you know, because you're so bogged down with obligations and things to do, places to go, people to see. And you lose a bit of that wonder and the stillness that you have in mm -hmm. summertime when you're young. So I would love to hear about when you wrote Head Rush and what headspace you were in. Yeah, it totally is that feeling. I think I wrote it when I was a teenager. So it was like the transition between having like endless summer feeling, mm. um, not really even marking time and then kind of 
knowing that you were going to leave something behind, like experiencing a day that was so great that it was almost bittersweet because you kind of missed it already before it was over. The thing about those feelings of sort of innocence and freedom when you're younger, I used to think those were a bit finite. But I also feel like during the pandemic specifically, I aged backwards in a sense in that I started tapping into all of these things that I liked when I was younger, things like doing nothing and walking and painting and playing sports. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you feel similarly? Sort of. Yeah. I think like a lot of the aspects of putting together an album release are sort of like drawing on different creative Brain, sure. parts of the brain and I just directed my first music video which was kind of like just playing like I yes. felt like a kid trying to come up with an idea for like I felt my sister and I used to make videos on video star like the app on our phones when we were kids and it just feels awesome to be able to tap into that like fun creative space that is there's no pressure really on it that's a great way of saying it play play is a little bit lost as you get older and I think it's so integral to tap back into that definitely speaking of you know your sister your family you grew up as part of a musical family which is very cool so your aunt is Sarah Harmer both of your parents were touring musicians yeah who met in her band in her band you know it doesn't always mean that someone's going to follow in the same footsteps some people go the complete opposite direction totally but do you think there was a moment when you were growing up where you said yeah I'm definitely going to do this it's always been a thing like my dad got me a drum set when I was 10 and it was in our dining room and I was oh sorry I wasn't even 10 I was probably like three or four. Oh wow and I used to sit at it and tell jokes and drum while they had people <laughs> over. I've always liked putting on a show and always like wanted to perform and always loved singing and always wrote songs. So now it just kind of feels like what I was meant to do. Yeah. Not to sound cheesy, but. Not at all. It sounds like it's something that you definitely witnessed a lot growing up, but yeah. you also very much embodied yourself. For sure. Yeah. yeah I was lucky to got to sing back up in my Aunt Sarah's band for a summer festivals nice. one year, and that was really nice. Yeah. Really fun. How's it been as you've been starting out in the industry with a pretty recognizable last name? It's been great. I'm proud to be related to her, and it's been nice to be recognized um, as being related to Sarah because I really like her, and I'm proud to be related to her, and she's taught me a lot and really been supportive throughout my music career starting. So That's so special, and also so special that you're now label mates. Yeah. Yeah, I've like looked up to so many people who are on arts and crafts since I was younger, like Feist and Broken Social Scene totally. and Gord Downey and like everyone, all those Canadian musicians. So it's really nice to be in that scene now. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a pretty iconic label. Yeah. Tell me about this next song, Austin, that you're going to sing. Um, I wrote Austin after coming back from Austin, Texas when I was on tour as a backup singer. And I my dad had told me to go to this barbecue restaurant and I just like didn't think it was going to happen but we ended up having time off there and I like googled it and it was around the corner from our hotel so we just went and just had an amazing day eating brisket being Texans (laughs) Um, and then I just kind of like felt connected to him because he told me to go there and he had been a touring musician before too Mm. and I kind of understood how that felt for the first time because I was experiencing it sure So, yeah, this song is about my relationship with my dad. Very cool. All right, well, let's get into Austin. Cool.
That was very nice. Thank you. How does it feel to be up there? That's a scorching song. It's fun. Yeah? Yeah. We love playing that one live. My dad actually plays guitar on the recording on my record. That's what I wanted to ask about. Was that a pretty cool experience? Yeah, it was fun. It was just me, Dill, and my dad doing overdubs in our family dining room. How did your dad feel about the final product? I think he likes it. I think he leaves that up to me usually. Very good. He's very like... It's your thing. You're the boss. Yeah. Here's a line from that song that I love. We were cowboys in another life, but I am you, your other life is mine. You're quite the lyricist. Thank you. I had a theory a while ago that when people talk about in a past life, it's actually just your parents' life. I thought it was kind of an interesting thing. Like, I was living the way my dad had lived once, which is sort of like in a past life, but it's my dad. Absolutely. That's what I meant by that. Speaking of past lives, you are not brand new to music. While this is your debut album, you have worked as a backing vocalist. Mm -hmm. You've done tons in a live experience. How do you think what you've done in the past has informed what you're doing now on your solo music? I was saying when we were coming in here today and setting up, it's funny because I've done this kind of thing a lot. Like I'm kind of comfortable in a live off the floor setting because of being a backup singer and um, doing like TV and radio stuff, but I've never done it as me. Like with my own songs being the front person. So it's fun. It's different. I can imagine. Better for me. I need to tell you how I got turned on to you as a singer. So a little birdie told me that you were making music. And of course, I was curious. And naturally, I crept your Instagram (laughs) where I found a very short video of you. You couldn't even see your face singing at the piano and you were performing Hard Place from her. I just remember my jaw dropping and I thought to myself, she's going to be one of the great vocalists of our time. You were just stunting all over that song, just cartwheeling left, right and center vocally. That was also in the days of being a backup singer. So my voice was like very, I was used to singing that kind of thing. Right. Um, I was definitely like loosened up in that, in like the vocal runs realm. Yes, nice and nimble. Yeah. What I found interesting though, is that then I heard your solo music, which was equally beautiful, but folk rock Mm -hmm. but I feel like you have two sides of you because there's a little (laughs) bit of R&B in there so I'm wondering is there the potential for a genre pivot at some point or maybe a little bit of experimentation yeah I went through a huge R&B phase and I still love R&B I I listened to it like in soul all through high school Mm. and I sang jazz in like my high school band nice and so I definitely have like a lot of different musical inspirations but um, I think you can hear more of it in some of the other songs. The one, the singles we've released are like definitely le- folk rock leaning. Right. Yeah. More to come though. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting you mentioned kind of the folk rock. In a sense, it's got a bit of a DIY vibe to it. Mm-hmm. I just feel when I listen to this music, like it's so much of you and your buddies jamming. Yeah. You know, no strings attached, no big corporate pressure, just having such a good time making mm-hmm. music for you. For the first time, you know, because I know you were a backing vocalist in the past. Is that kind of what you were going for with this album? Totally. And like, that's what we did. Right. So like that, it sounds like that because we were in um, like a, a essentially writing room or overdub studio. And like we had crammed a whole live off the floor set up into that room. And like I was singing beside Julian's kick drum. Like it wasn't nice. proper, <laughs> proper technique, but our friend Jasper Smith, um, I had just met him and he was like, want to make a record? Well, actually, he wasn't like, want to make a record. He was like, want to do some recording. And I was like, yeah. And then in my mind, I'm like, I have 11 songs. We're making an album. And he was kind of like, okay, we're making an album. I've never done this before. And he just like pulled it off um, very well. I love that. Yeah. So you didn't actually set out to make an album, but an album came together? I did. (laughs) Oh, you secretly did? (laughs) And I think, like, everybody was kind of aware of it. And sonically, you know, is this going to stay in the folk lane, or are there other things we can expect from the album? Um, I think the songs you've heard are the most rockin'. Okay. And then the other songs, there's, like, a little bit more of an R&B vibe, like we talked about, and a little bit more of an acoustic feel. Great. Yeah. 
Well, I'm so excited to hear the whole collection. I've only heard uh, the single so far, and I think it's going to be great. I think you're so talented. Thank you so much. And I'm really, really enjoying your rise, and we're going to keep an eye on it. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Intro, Canada's home for new and emerging artists. If you'd like more episodes of The Intro, you can hang out here, or you can head to cbcmusic.ca slash the intro. 